In today's presentation, we will discuss the principle, construction and working of nickel prism, limitations of nickel prism and nickel prism as a polarizer and as an analyzer. It was invented by William Nickel in 1828. Nickel prism is an optical device made from calcite for producing and analyzing plain polarized light. Principle of nickel prism. Nickel prism is based upon phenomena of double refraction. When light is passed through double refracting crystal like calcite, it is broken up into two refracted rays, O ray that is ordinary ray and E ray that is extraordinary ray. Both these rays are plane polarized, having their vibrations at right angles to each other. Construction of nickel prism. It is constructed from the calcite crystal BDHF having length DH that is three times to its width DB. Its end faces BD and FH are grounded in such a way that angle BDH and angle BFH becomes equal to the angle 68 degree instead of angle B dash D H dash and angle BF H dash which are 71 degree in the natural crystal. The crystal is then cut diagonally into two parts. The surfaces of these parts are grinded to make optically flat and then these are polished. Then polished surfaces are cemented together by the layer of Canada balsam which is a clear transparent substance. Now the action of working of nickel prism. When a beam of unpolarized light is incident on the face BD, it splits into two refracted rays named O ray and E ray. These two rays are plane polarized rays whose vibrations are at right angles to each other. The refractive index of Canada balsam is 1.55 which lies between refractive index of O ray that is 1.658 and E ray that is 1.4864. It is clear from the above discussion that Canada balsam layer act as an optically rarer medium for the O ray and it acts as an optically denser medium for E ray. When O ray of light travels in the calcite crystal and enters the Canada balsam layer, it passes from denser to rarer medium. The angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. The O ray is totally internally reflected from the crystal and only extraordinary ray is transmitted through the prism. Therefore, fully plane polarized wave is generated with the help of nickel prism. And this is very much clear from the figure. Nickel prism as a polarizer and as an analyzer. In order to produce and analyze the plane polarized light, we arrange two nickel prisms. When a beam of unpolarized light is incident on the nickel prism, emergent beam from the prism is obtained as plane polarized and which has vibrations parallel to the principal section. This prism is known as polarizer. If the polarized beam falls on another parallel nickel prism P2, whose principal section is parallel to that of P1, then the incident beam will behave as E ray inside the nickel prism P2 and gets completely transmitted through it. This way, the intensity of the emergent light will be maximum. Now, the nickel prism P2 is rotated about its axis. Then we note that the intensity of emerging light decreases and become zero at 90 degree rotation of the second prism. In this position, the vibrations of E ray become perpendicular to the principal section of the analyzer. Hence, this ray behave as O ray for the prism P2 and is totally internally reflected by 
Canada balsam layer. This tech can be used for detecting the plane polarized light and the nickel prism P2 act as an analyzer. If the nickel prism P2 is further rotated about its axis, the intensity of the light emerging from it increases and becomes maximum for the position when the principal section of P2 is again parallel to that of P1. Hence, the nickel prism P1 and P2 act as polarizer and analyzer respectively. Now, drawbacks of nickel prism. The first drawback of nickel prism the nickel prism can act as a polarizer effectively only if incident beam is slightly convergent or slightly divergent and fails if incident beam is highly convergent or highly divergent. The second drawback, if angle of incidence of incident ray at the crystal surface is decreased, the angle of incidence at the Canada balsam surface decreases. If angle SMS dash is a smaller then 14 degree, the angle of incidence at the Canada balsam surface is less than 69 degree and ordinary ray is also transmitted through the nickel prism. Hence, emergent ray from the nickel will be mixture of O-ray and E-ray. That is, it will not be plane polarized. The third drawback, the refractive index of calcite crystal is different for different directions of E-ray being minimum when it is traveling at right angle to the optic axis and maximum when it is traveling along the optic axis because along optic axis E-ray and O-ray travels with the same speed and for intermediate angles they have different speeds. For a particular value of angle of incidence of ray SM, refractive index of extraordinary ray may be more than the refractive index of Canada balsam and extraordinary ray will also be totally internally reflected and no light emerges from the nickel. Thus, a nickel can polarize light if it is confined within an angle of 28 degree between the extreme rays of incoming beam. 